Hi, I'm Brandon R. Maggart. You might recognize me. You've probably seen me many, many times on television and films, or maybe a big Broadway show or two. You might even have read one or two of my books. Now, here is my new book, Gates Crossing, about three young girls coming to America from London to Philadelphia in the 1700s. In the front cover, back cover. And I'll tell you some more about the covers later. <laughs> I love the, the, how this cover evolved, and I'll tell you more about that later. But first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you a little bit from the prologue. Okay, now settle in. Settle in. Okay. Good, okay. Here we go. And I will tell you such a story. Cage Crossing refers to the hazardous and extended crossing of an ocean and the spanning of an adventurous, purposeful, and very well-lived lifetime of Kate Malone. On February 29th in the year 1741, in Port London, England, a baby girl is born to Liam and Amy Malone. They name her Mary Catherine. Her father, Liam, quite partial to the sound of his own voice, fancies himself to be a poet a charmer, and a captivating spinner of yarns. Unfortunately, Liam Malone is enslaved to a mistress, a she-devil bitch from hell that lives in a bottle at Gilly's Pub. When Mary Catherine is but six years old, her mother, Amy, disappears into fates unknown. It is suspected that Amy did end overwhelming melancholia by jumping from Putney Bridge into the swirling waters of the River Thames. On May 24th in the year 1756, Mary Catherine Malone and two classmates, Carrie Bishop and Daisy Cartwright, all recent graduates of St. Hilda's School in Port London, embark on a four- to six-week crossing to America, to the colonies. And they're contracted to be uh, indentured servants for a period of five years to finance the voyage, and after which time they will be emancipated with no further obligation, and they will sail on a ship called the Fancy. On this horrendous crossing, they will survive raging storms, near starvation, ravenous rats, murderous pirates, kidnapping, madness, an uncharted island with buried treasures, falling in love, and finally, 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 making land in, uh, in America at Port Philadelphia by surviving, by surviving 163 wretched days at sea, over four months after their anticipated arrival. They were considered lost at sea. Okay, let me continue a little, just a little bit more. And this this historical fiction is acquainting the three young girls with, with good and evil, lust and love, life and death, and the many struggles involved in the, in the birth of a new nation. As it is with any birth, these are painful times arriving and living through the American Revolution, along with a few of those Indian Wars. Young Kate. Young Kate is a determined flower, emerging through a crack between the cobblestones along the waterfront area near the River Thames. And she and her two friends, Carrie and Daisy, blossom forth, much as a rose, a daffodil, and a violet, seeking more fertile ground in which to thrive. The rose Kate is determined, strong, and with a few thorns for protection. The daffodil, Daisy, she's open, beautiful, and without any fear whatsoever. The violet, Carrie, <laughs> Carrie's vulnerable, often demurring, but equally as beautiful in spirit as are the rose and the daffodil. 
A Kate is a survivor without ever having to sacrifice her integrity. Now understand that Kate had never experienced uh, up close slavery. She'd read about it in, in Roman days. But she, when she arrived at the plantation, which she used to serve, there, they were house slaves and field slaves. And she became friends with a little house slave girl that was about her same age. And they became very close. And one day, Kate realized that her friend Elsie, that's the little girl's name, uh, could, couldn't read. So Kate set out right away to teach her to read. And Elsie picked that up right away. A very smart girl. And of course, back then, in the slave times of slavery, it was against the law to teach somebody to read. It was against to, to teach a, a slave to read. Oh, my God, they might understand what's going on. <laughs> so uh, anyway, they they grew up together. They married, went off and married. They, oh, they opened their own school and they taught other young people who were not supposed to be taught to read. They did that on the sly. And eventually being pacifists, they left and settled in the Appalachia where they had their own little commune with their own family, with their own American family. The, uh, wh whoever was walking through and was lost, an, an Indian or uh, an African-American or a soldier who was worn down and battered and lost and on his way home, they took them in and made them their American family. And and Kate had read this little pamphlet called uh, Common Sense. And this little pamphlet called Common Sense made sense to Kate about how you should make sense in your life. And she then when the Declaration of Independence came along and about and the, head of the uh, Constitution and the uh, uh, a country of the people, by the people, and for the people, with rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's, that's what she had in mind, and that's what she uh, espoused in, uh, in, in their commune. And it wasn't easy. Believe me, it wasn't easy. They had troubles. But they loved each other, and they loved their family, and... Kate's Crossing, Kate's Crossing, by Brandon R. Maggart. Now, I'd like to tell you a little bit. <laughs> I love this cover. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the cover. Uh, when I, many years ago, I was doing uh, uh, the wonderful Rodgers and Hammerstein musical called South, South Pacific, and we were touring the nation with uh, starring Howard Keel and Jane Powell, and I was playing Luther Bill, Billis, the comic role, and Jane and I had, had a number in it called Honey Bun. Hundred and one pounds of fun. Uh, that's my little honey bun. Get a load of honey bun. <laughs> anyway, Jane was like entertaining the troops, making the troops laugh. And Jane was dressed up in, as a sailor, and I was dressed up as a, a, a CB or a sailor in drag. <laughs> Early drag, <laughs> with the you know flowers and you know, straw off the things here, co coconut shell here, coconut shell there, bare midriff and grass skirt. And uh, in the show, I was I had to do a, a belly dance, and I needed a, a ship to, to, to go on, on my stomach. And, and Bill Nolte was in the cast. Said, "Here, I can draw you a ship." And he took a marker and he went, boop, 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 and they drew that magnificent ship. And I made that ship dance. I rocked that ship for for 10 months, eight shows a week, which means Bill had to draw that ship. Now, flash forward, I called Bill. I said, hey, Bill, I need another ship. He said, what are you talking about? I said, I need another ship. I've written a book called Kate's Crossing, and I need a, I need a ship on the cover. He said, what kind of ship? And I said, well, a ship that would be taking people, passengers across there in 1700s, 200 people like that. Can you, can you do that for me? Uh, and uh, he said, well, let me think about it. And uh, 
So he came a couple of weeks later. He came back with this thing, said, with Europe over here in the ship, and and I told him what I wanted else on the cover with, with the girl and the lantern on the front, and and Minerva and the owl. And he said, look, here's my idea. We're going to put the they leave on, on the uh, on the front cover, and they're arriving on the back cover. <laughs> I said, bingo, and I I uh, I, I contracted uh, Bill to do the cover. And my cover of Kate's Crossing, and that's Kate's Crossing, and I I just love the cover. Thanks, Bill Nolte, and thanks. Hey, took me two years to write this sucker. Hope you'll enjoy it. Did you guys like it?